Hello and welcome to the New Farm Training Series. Today's topic is going to be redheaded flea beetle management. Our agenda for today is going to give you an overview of the damage that redheaded flea beetles will cause, its life cycle, and control measures. Redheaded flea beetle is a native beetle that has a widespread range in the U.S. Uh, its native range runs from Maine to Florida, over to Texas and Montana. Nurseries along the Atlantic coast from Connecticut to Michigan and throughout the South have reported injury. The redheaded flea beetle has become a serious pest over the past couple years. Our goal today is to review important information about the redheaded flea beetle to develop best management practices. Let's look at a visual identification of this insect. We'll see that the adults are shiny black with a red head and are approximately one tenth to one fourth of an inch long. You will also see they have large antenna. In regards to feeding, the red-headed flea beetle adults chew holes in tender leaves or feed through the upper or lower leaf surfaces of plants with thick leaves. Here are some signs of feeding damage on Forsythia and Wygelia, as well as on boxwood. The larvae are creamy white in color with red streaking and are one fifth to four tenths of an inch in length. The larvae have a brown head capsule and six legs near the head. The feature that distinguishes red-headed flea beetle larvae is a small fleshy projection on top of the last section of the abdomen. Between the larvae and adult stage is the pupal stage. So let's continue to talk about the life cycles. The red-headed flea beetle overwinters eggs in the soil. The larvae hatch in the spring and begin feeding on the roots. The larvae are elongate and creamy white, as mentioned before, and heavy infestations may reduce root mass or girdle the plants. They are an especially damaging pest because they feed on roots as well as leaves. After pupation, the adult red-headed flea beetle emerge from the soil and begin feeding on the leaves. They are small, about 1 16th of an inch long, shiny black beetles with reddish to dark colored head and long antenna. There are at least two generations in Delaware and three or more south of North Carolina. The favorite hosts are hydrangea, forsythia, knockout roses, but they also can be found on chrysanthemums, hibiscus, hollies, wygelia, as well as lamb's quarter, pigweed, and a variety of other weeds. So how do we control this pest? What is our best management practices? Adult management has been frustrating for growers. They find that even after using frequent applications of insecticides, they're not reducing the adult population and controlling the damage to acceptable levels. Part of this has to do with not controlling the, the larval stage that is found in the soil. Even if you're killing all the adults that are present or you think are present, more adults are emerging from the soil every day. Growing degree day modeling systems. Larval activity of the first generation can be predicted by using growing degree day modeling and scouting. Growing degree day models are used extensively in traditional agriculture to estimate the crop growth and development in relation to the air temperature and to estimate insect development. To calculate growing degree day levels, the high and low air temperature are averaged together, subtracted from a base temperature where metabolism is minimal and added to values from the previous days. The base temperature is that temperature below which plant growth is zero, so it's going to vary depending on the crop that you're growing. 
If the average temperature is below the base temperature, the growing degree day value for that day is zero. So your growing degree day equals the max plus the min divided by two minus the base, where GDD equals your growing degree day. Your day max is the maximum temperature for that given day. The day min is the minimum temperature for the given day. And the day base is your base temperature depending on the crop that you're growing. An easier way to get this information is to simply go online. There are various sites that will allow you to obtain a daily calendar of all the growing degree days in your particular area. All you have to do is simply plug in a zip code and it will provide the information for you. How do we use this information on growing degree days to help manage this pest? Larval activity of the first generation of red-headed flea beetle, say in Delaware, has been seen between 257 to 481 growing degree days. The emergence of the first generation adults occurred between 590 to 785 growing degree days. The larval activity of the second generation occurred between 1,818 to 1,869 growing degree days, and the emergence of the second generation adults occurred between 2,100 to 2,200 growing degree days. There are two periods of potential control for this pest, larval stage and the adult stage. There are a large number of insecticides registered for use and one insect growth regulator. Products that are labeled for red-headed flea beetle include chlorpyrifos, tame or bifenthrin product, mallet, safari, tristar, and the insect growth regulator novolurin. In summary, Red-headed flea beetle is widespread across the U.S. and feed on a wide range of agricultural, ornamental, and native plants. Growing degree day models are available to properly scout and time treatment options. A wide range of soil and foliar treatments can be utilized to achieve effective control. But remember, it is imperative to treat for both the larvae and the adults. Thank you for your time today, and thank you for your support of New Farm. We appreciate your business. If we can assist in any way, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you. Have a good day.